Product B has the same challenge as the minimum technical batch. The supply planner checked on a similar products that have the same batch as product B, but unfortunately, he doesn't find. If I was in his place, surely I will be confused. Because 99% from the inner dialogue will push me to produce under the shadows of the market needs. But you know what? Sometimes it's better to avoid it and not produce it. Think about this with me. Product B has a monthly production plan of half a ton. The minimum technical batch for this product is 10 tons. This MOQ covers a product B with 20 months. In that case, shall we produce the 10 tons with a coverage of 20 months? I know you would be hesitated to give a solid answer on this. But let me tell you the password here. It's the margin. Let's go together and unlock this password. The listing price to the trade of product B is 1000 US dollar per ton. And the cost of goods sold is 500 US dollar per ton. To calculate the margin of product B, we need to go through a mini profit and loss statement for product B. The first line in the P&L is the total sales, which is equal to the listing price, 1000 US dollar per ton, multiplied by 0.5 tons. For simplicity, we will assume that there is no trade discount. The third line is the net sales. It is the total sales minus trade discounts, which is the same as total sales 500 US dollars. The fourth line is the COGS, cost of goods sold, which is $250. The last line is the profit, which is the net sales minus cost of goods sold, $250 US dollar. Finally, the margin of product B is equal to the profit over the net sales, which is a 50% margin. 50% margin? It's not bad at all. But do you think this is the real margin? I don't think so. The shelf lifetime from production date until the expiry date for product B is 10 months. The MOQ covers 20 months. Here is the expiry zone. It means that 10 months from the stocks will be expired, which are equivalent to five tons from the demand. The expired stocks value equals five tons multiplied by the Cox value which is 500 US dollar per ton. 2,500 US dollar is the value of those expired stocks. Don't think that the 2,500 US dollar is the only expired stock. It's even more. There is something called the trade acceptable shelf lifetime. And usually it's measured by a percentage from the total shelf lifetime. Simply, it's an agreement between the distributor and the customer to not receive any stock less than the agreed percentage from the shelf lifetime. Let's assume the acceptable shelf lifetime in this case is 50%. There are five months are potential to be expired as well, which are equivalent to 2.5 tons with a COGS value of 1,250 US dollar. The potential projected provisions are equal to 1,250 US dollars plus 2,500 US dollars, which is equivalent 3,750 US dollars. Back to the P&L again, let's calculate the margin over 10 months as a full shelf lifetime of product B. The 10 month volume is five tons. The net sales are 5,000 US dollar. The COGS is 2,500 US dollars. And the profit is 2,500 US dollar with the same margin of 50%. Now, we need to allocate the potential expired stocks, 3,750 US dollar. There is another line under the COGS named as a provision with a negative sign. Well, after adding this 3,750 US dollar to the existing COGS value, it will increase from 2,500 US dollar to 6,250 US dollar with a profit of negative 1,250 US dollar and a margin of negative 25%. Sometimes it's better for the company to stop producing some of the SKUs. If you are working in supply planning department, here are the actions that are needed from your side on the minimum technical batch. Number one, less down all products under your portfolio. Number two, 
Compare the MOQ cover versus the maintained cycle stock. Three, this question you need to ask yourself. If the MOQ cover is greater than the cycle stock, you have two choices. Number one, if it's no, then there is no problem. Number two, if it's yes, ask another question. Is there any product that has the same batch? If the answer is yes, then use a sequential run strategy. If it's no, check on the potential expired stocks. Ask your finance business partner to calculate the margin after this provision. If it dilutes the margin, then align internally with your business and discontinue this product.